نحمده نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وصحبه واتباع الحمات الدين القويم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت لليم الحكيم اللهم جعلنا دعاة إليك وإلى رسولك اللهم صل على سيدنا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد مبارك وسلم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لغدة من لساني يفقه قولي وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا صابتهم مصيبة قالوا إن لله وإن إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المؤمن مهتدون إن الحمد إن الحمد لله تعالى All praise and all glory is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For each and every bounty that he has blessed us with Those that we receive and recognize and those that we receive and yet do not recognize. Indeed, it is by the grace and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are privileged to be here today, Yawmul Jumu'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through His infinite mercy, has given us another day and another chance in life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, amongst the most important aspects of our life, one of the relationship and the reality that we face and we seem to never get a hold of is that of struggles in our life we never come to understand to manage the struggles in our life and how and in what way is that related to our life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly states in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wala nabluwannakum that Allah is going to test us without a doubt trials, tests tribulations everything that surrounds the life of a human being in this world is centered around what Allah says in the Quran don't think we are here and living in paradise no it's not that we are here because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to put us through some level of test and trial. And that test and trial doesn't mean misery. It doesn't mean that we live in sorrow or every day there is going to be something that is going to cause us pain. For some people it may be like that. For some people it may be different circumstances. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts that relationship for the human beings to understand in the Quran, the believer. Don't think you are here except that Allah says that He is here to test us. And we have to come to terms with understanding that test is part of our life. Trials are part of our life. But important to understanding this is to understand the relationship that it shares in your life. What Allah wants to know from this from our wealth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about your own self and your property and your plantations and all that you have. Life, all of these things have been tested. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about those who bashir is sabirin, who have patience. One of the qualities that is mentioned in all of the tests 
is firstly to hold back. Think. Understand what direction to take. What choice you are going to make. How you are going to approach your life on the circumstance that you are in. And many in the world today, when we are faced or before the test, and what do we tell ourselves? No matter how hard or how difficult this test is, we try to avoid it. Sometimes people go to different extents to avoid and keep away the stress. So some people say when you, they go to the bars or the rum shops, as we call them, is to avoid what? Stress. Some people use drugs because they can't handle their own family, so because they're avoiding stress. Some people run away from the whole situation and go somewhere else because they're avoiding stress or difficulty or trials. What is really the outcome and the purpose of our test? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in relationship to this, وَبَشِّرِ sabirin. So today the challenge to us, those who hold on with patience, the challenge for us to face is that what comes our way? You get into an accident, Allah. Driving, you get into an accident. You start to worry about who fixed this, who's going to do that, and you start to worry a whole set of things. Sometimes, boy, I just take out this brand new vehicle, and this happens to me. What will be my condition now? How am I going to get over this? And say, this is my test. Some people buy a brand new vehicle and it disappears from the house one time. Someone stole it, it's gone. Illness. You're living life good every day. And one day some sickness come upon us. Marvel. You know, save us some such. But when it comes upon us, now the difficulty is everything else falls and you're trying to manage your life. Can I survive this? And every day becomes a worry. What can I use? What can I take? Who will say a prayer for me? Who will do some Quran? Who will make dua for me? Who will do something to help me out of this situation? And the worry starts at this point in time. This becomes the struggle for me at this point in time. My illness takes preference over other things. And there are many other issues in my life. But now the illness becomes what? The priority of the struggle. Because if I don't live, then what is it about the rest of the worry? It becomes no worry because you'll no longer be here to worry about what you're worrying about. All of these things, even the financial challenges that we face every day. Every day we want something, we want to do this, we want that. We have to establish this part of the business or do something on the other side. Something to get done in the house. All over, we are looking for some way to balance our life when it comes to the money too. That is a struggle for us as well. A worry about how to live and survive. And at the end of it, even the relationship that we share with people becomes a worry for us. Because next thing somebody on the other side, this person talking about you this way, that person talking about that you that way, and you're always in a stress, worrying about what people would say. But it doesn't go anywhere with the relationship that you are struggling with. And this drags us into a situation where we find ourselves in a state where we feel that we are powerless and we are helpless at times. But this is important for us to recognize because Allah wants us to recognize that we are powerless and we are helpless. Because where should we turn as Muslims when we are called upon in our test and our trial. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَبَشِّرْ sabirin." Give glad tidings to those who have patience. And what they do, Allah gives the ta'alluq, the, conne the connection between that relationship when a difficulty comes upon us, when a struggle comes upon us, when a hardship comes upon us, when a situation comes upon us. Musibah. When such a difficulty comes upon you, you turn to whom? Allah. Kalu inna lillah. We recognize and they say, this is from Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. 
And we always translate it as we come from Allah and we return it to Allah. But everything that happens in our life is a relationship that is already known to Allah. Every circumstance that comes around in our life, whether we, we think to ourselves that this now happened, but is already known to Allah. This day, this time, this location, this is the condition of this servant and this is how this servant will be today. It is the reality for us. We are witnessing it, but within the knowledge and the understanding of Allah in His Kitab, this is already written. Subhanallah. For us, as believers, we establish those are the ones who establish the relationship with their Lord. Salawatu mir Rabbihim wa rahma who earn the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? The condition and the direction we take our difficulties, our struggles. And none of us will really understand the other person's struggle and challenge that we face every day personally. Who knows it best? Allah. But the difficulty is to accept and submit to Allah as believers. Many a times in our own community as Muslims, we cannot even figure out what is the relationship between us and how to uplift our own community when we are seeing our own brothers and our own sisters in a time of difficulty, what to do? What to do? How do we advise our own brothers and sisters how to come to the house of Allah? Turn to the house of Allah. Find your connection to your Allah in the time of our needs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought the entire world to its knees. What is the objective? What is the objective? us to turn and run all over the place we we'll turn to Allah and submit on our knees before Allah and to submit on our knees before Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those are the ones those are the ones whom Allah died the ones who turn to Allah Allah guides them Allah relieve them Allah finds a solution to their challenges this was with all the Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam when they had their tests, when they had their different difficulties before Allah, when they had to face their struggles, who did they turn to? Allah. Even as Muslims who would submit to the deen of Allah, tests come to us. You can't say you believe and it will happen to you. It will happen to us. It will happen to all of us. But the condition is where do we turn and what do we do? We turn to Allah. This is the example that the Quran shows us again and again. As Muslims, we have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No other solution there will be for us except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in the Quran many ayats that tells us about test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and certainly I will test them until the point to know who will be the ones who will stand up to the struggle of this deen, who will stand up to the obedience of Allah, who will come towards the path of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For amongst them, was and amongst those who will establish patience, وَلَنَبْلُوا أَخْبَارَكُمْ And with that test, we will have the outcome, the knowledge of what they really do. Allah will test us to know what will be our outcome. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions even more and more ayats like this. الَّذِينَ خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَمْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Surah Al-Mulk, we all recite this and all, every night we try to recite this surah. What is the objective? To see within ourselves, within the individual, who will become better? Who will become better? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many more ayahs. But what is important? How do we treat with these struggles as well? How do we treat with, treat with our struggles? One, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتُمْ مُصِيبًا We turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are afflicted, we turn to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Lamal qalbu It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who controls the heart of the human beings. Allah is the one who alif bayna qulubina, the one who can only bring pure and love between our hearts. Allah is the one who can bring itminan and tranquility between us. Allah is the one who can transform the condition of the mind of the human being. Unlike the shaitan, the shaitan comes and he touches us. Where does he touch us? He touches us in our mind, our thoughts, in our thinking. He puts that there, but he cannot go further than that. He cannot go further than that. He destroys the mind and the thinking of the human being and puts him into waswas and into doubt and into a state of frustration like that. But Allah is the one who affects the heart and the resolve of a believer who can make a difference far beyond. But shaitan cannot reach that far. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to the believers an opportunity of treating with our difficulties by turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives and grants mercy towards us. No matter what we are blessed with, in terms of all of the material things and all of the comforts and all of the help, all of it combined, it cannot bring it minan and tranquility. It only comes from Allah. It only comes from Allah. Because all of these things puts us into a position. The other aspect of the Quran and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions for us to have some level of treating with our difficulties is to show gratitude. To show gratitude to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ala kulli halin under all conditions. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us we should say what? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah ala kulli halin praising Allah under all circumstances brings the believer to a level of contentment despite their disposition. You know, if we examine all of our circumstances and how many times we would say Alhamdulillah instead of using some other type of language. You know, something happens to us in a bad way. Sometimes when we get a difficulty and a struggle, some people just lash out by using some obscene language or pelting away something or throwing something in a different direction before even saying, all praises for Allah, even ala hal, ala kulli halin, under all conditions. We praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions us, إِذَا رَوَا مَا يُحِبُّ قَالَ Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, bi ni'matihi, tamma salah, salihat, فَإِذَا رَوَا مَا يَكْرَهُ قَالَ Alhamdulillah, when something good comes away, we say Alhamdulillah. And when something comes away, we don't even, we do not like what we see and what is the condition of it. We still say Alhamdulillah. This, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is far a greater call for us in our relationship when it comes towards maintaining that love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despite our struggles and today my dear brothers and my dear sisters we are faced with far more a greater test than we have ever seen amongst us and we have seen so many people even in our small Muslim community in our little Trinidad here of so many people who have died that we have known or come to know in our lives and so many people who are facing different types of circumstance out of the present condition that we are in. Now is the time, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, to understand that these struggles and these times of test before us and trials that are before us, many of us, may, some of us may be able to over with, or with, withhold these types of things or, or stand the test of it, but there are many amongst us that we have to come to know of them and try and assist and support for our own selves to benefit out of the opportunities that Allah has given to us. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us ease when we would support those who are having difficulty in this world. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength that we will read Quran and make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us some level of protection and shield against the test and trials that are before all of us in our communities. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring shifa and cure to all of those who are amongst us who are sick and ailing in some way or the other. Because we need all of the support we can get from our Creator, Allah. This is where all our support and strength come from. 
Let's put our reliance in Allah, that Allah will remove these difficulties from us, inshaAllah. Sadaq Allah, wa sadaq al-Rasulih al-Kareem, wa'afiru dhanil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen.